is the Bulldog on Class X Radio. Before I get rolling here, give us a traffic report, Denise. Well, it's showing one accident left over here, Paddock, at Seymour's. We've still got that one earlier. There was another accident. I guess they've cleared that one up. That was Kibby at uh, Kibby Lane at US 50. You know, 74 eastbound. That traffic is uh, really the slowest traffic I'm seeing as far as heading inbound this morning. That's slow from Shepherd Creek. The rest of it, uh, northbound 71, 75, not too bad. Really Dixie to the bridge, and there are no big delays out there. We, we like that. We, yeah. All right. Uh, we got Jake here. Now we got to give Jake a little air time, our youngster in the uh, studio who grabs all of our news bits and other bits. And, you know, he's a youngster, so sometimes he misses those ones that he has no clue what they are. Yeah, he's also young. our chief poster order and decorator. I see we got George Harrison and Van Halen in, Jake. Who do we have on the way? I know we have Tommy Boy coming in. Raquel Welch is coming. Yes. Um, there's there's two other ladies. I forget who they are. Ah, uh, Cheryl Teagues. Yes. Fishnet. Yeah, Teagues. And then um, one more. Who was the other one? Hmm. I, was, I, I have no be, idea. I wasn't, I wasn't you picking. Before that pan- Kathy Ireland. Yeah, yeah, I think that is it. All right. What about that fatty you wanted from before that's, uh, that used to be married to uh, Pam Anderson? To, uh, no, we need a Pam in the Baywatch. <laughs> I tried to find a Baywatch one. Surprisingly, no Baywatch persons. I really you know, on Pam, eBay? Pam Anderson does nothing for me. Oh, she is nothing. smoking. Really? <laughs> I was just going to say, that's kind of like... I think she was pretty attractive in Baywatch era, but... Well, yeah. After yeah, that, she's down a little drain. worn out. Not Jennifer Aniston. What's the other one that's married to to what's his name now? Um, like oh, those th- that yeah, guy. Her, oh, her, what's, her, it, what's her name? Married to what's his uh-huh. name? Uh-huh. I think no, that's what's her name. Jennifer yeah. Aniston. That one's on its way. Brad Pitt's wife. Now, what, what's her name? Angelina no. Jolie. Angelina Jolie. I mean, that's to me. She's just kind of like Tomb Raider. Taylor Robinson. I mean, it's. Hey, All right. Now, who's the one that was married to if Trump? Any, have any of you guys, Marla Maples? <laughs> we reported Mar- Thomas Maples. Did any of you all see <laughs> the movie What's Lincoln? His name? <laughs> have any of you all seen the movie Lincoln? No. Okay. Wait. Yeah, we need Jake. Hey, right. We need Jake's Lady, porn name. Ladies and gentlemen, the okay, Jake. What's your porn name before we go? I don't know. I don't know. What your middle name and your, the street you were, grew up on. Robert Calumet. Calumet. <laughs> yeah. That's not right. bad. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I watched the movie Lincoln on Saturday afternoon at 1.30 at the Rave Theater in Florence. And it was it was in one of the smaller theaters. And it was pretty well sold out. We had to sit up front, which is fine because we don't mind sitting up front, my wife and I. And from all my study of Lincoln, you know, Daniel Day-Lewis, I mean, just absolutely captured him. And Daniel Day-Lewis is known for getting into the uh, part and staying in the part during the whole filming, even when he's off the screen or he's not being filmed. And I want to tell you, Spielberg, as the director, puts together the story and films the story in remarkable fashion. I mean, you feel like you're there. I mean, you do. And he uses Lincoln's storytelling throughout it. The movie focuses on Lincoln's desire to pass the 13th Amendment free freedom for all the slaves, before the war's end and how he went about doing so. Tommy Lee Jones plays the Republican senator who was considered what they called a radical, Thaddeus Stevens from Pennsylvania. And the scenes that he are in, he just steals the show. And there are lots of other actors and parts that do a great job. Sally Field does a great job as Mary Todd Lincoln. And you'll recognize some of these actors, but... It's remarkable. There's one story in the film where Lincoln talks about a compass. He's he's in the basement talking about, you know, what they need to do to get the 13th Amendment passed. And people have a hard time compromising their beliefs, see, to make it happen. And Thaddeus Stevens, I'm not going to give it away, but Thaddeus Stevens is one who is struggling because... The 13th Amendment isn't enough for him. He wants even more. Okay? So Lincoln's asking him to compromise. And Lincoln talks about a compass always points north. But if you head north along the way, you might encounter swamps and deserts and other obstacles, and you got to deviate a little bit to get where you're going due north. It's a great analogy. And as I watched the movie, I thought about 
And I actually put this in my phone right away so I didn't forget the application of history. You can study history and then use its application to make good decisions. The example I always like to use the most is Hitler's invasion of Russia. If he would have applied knowledge of history in light of what happened to Napoleon when he invaded Russia and got stuck there in winter, Hitler might have not gone to Russia. Barack Obama actually had a private screening last week of Lincoln with Spielberg and Daniel Day-Lewis, so forth and so on. Okay? Now, he also claimed before coming into office, he enjoyed Doris Goodwin Kearns' book, The Team of Rivals, which focused on Lincoln's election and him bringing different people from different parties together. And it struck me, you know, watching this movie, you know, how all these, you know who's going to see this movie? The president's going to see the movie. All the members of Congress are going to see the movie. Everybody in the U.S. Senate's going to see the movie. All the needle Myers running around Washington are going to see the movie. And they're going to say, oh, Lincoln's all great, man. His movie's great. Lincoln was great. No, that. But they're not going to do what Lincoln would be doing. They're not going to follow his example. They're not going to do like Lincoln. Do you know Lincoln rarely slept? He worked and worked and worked. He'd go down in the middle of the night to the War Department to check on things, get telegrams, and they depict that in the movie. He actually went and studied books about fighting battles and war so he could learn. It's incredible. He also wasn't pretentious. He was a leader among leaders. He pushed the legal limits to his office, too, which is depicted in the movie, to save the union. Of course, Barack Obama will push the legal limits of his office for political gain and re-election and cover-up and so forth and so on. I can't watch Lincoln and not want to work harder, try to achieve some greatness, and emulate his humanity towards others. They depict how he pardoned. And this is this is historical fact. He pardoned so many men, it drove his secretary of war, Stanton, nuts. And he's like, why shouldn't I pardon a 16-year-old? This war doesn't need another corpse. But I wonder, you know, will it sink in? He had a private screening. Barack Obama the, one of the least hardest working presidents we have ever had. Will Obama stay up all night? Ever? I was, uh, you know, this fiscal crisis that we have. Okay, what are they going to do? After a while, what would Lincoln, first of all, Lincoln would never get us where we are. I was also struck how many white people worked awful hard and how many died to end slavery. I mean, in this movie, you could say, I mean, these are white senators fighting to end slavery. A white president trying to end slavery. Black and white soldiers fighting to end slavery. 93% of blacks vote for Obama, despite double-digit unemployment, doubling the unemployment. And it supports my notion that blacks don't give any credit to the whites who fought for their freedom as a race and still blame whites for not only slavery, but... All their ills. We are a far cry from Martin Luther King Jr.'s plea. Judged by the content of the character, not the color of their skin. However, it's not what he thought. It's not what he thought. It's that race in 2012 trumped character, trumped the record, trumped policies, trumped plans. So a white doesn't get judged, or a black man running for president doesn't get judged by those things. It's that he's black, so be it. And blacks, of course, just always felt all those years, well, white, white, white. I predict business as usual from Obama, Reid, Pelosi, and the Democrats. They won't learn a thing from Lincoln. You know, Lincoln was even embarrassed by his wife's spending. Obama, not so much. You know what? Lincoln also had Grant. Obama had Petraeus. If only Obama and the members of Congress 
would ask every single freaking day, what would Lincoln do? On Class X Radio, here's a little rock for you, and we come back. I'm going to read the Gettysburg Address on Class X Radio.